Hi, this is Pete Lyons with Let's Play Salesforce. And uh, this is kind of a first. We're going to handle things a little bit differently tonight. So this is a spring 21 sneak peek video. But unlike those times where I kind of know what I'm looking for, and it's obvious that I'm clicking on it for the first time, I really have no idea what I'm looking for. Uh, and so Enrude from Salesforce, he's a, a one of the member of the product team, is going to kind of help me navigate through my GS0 environment. And some of the features are not going to be enabled because they're behind perms that haven't been turned on yet. But we're going to see how many of these Spring 21 gems that we can find as we open up our Spring 21 Christmas as the snow is falling here in wonderful Buffalo, New York. Uh, Anaru, do you want to say hello and give a quick intro? Yes, definitely. Hello, all. I'm Anirudh. I'm with the product team on the Tableau CRM side. And uh, yeah, Pete said we're going to have a uh, treasure hunt here and kind of look for all the features. I'm going to hopefully be able to guide him through all the good stuff that we have and that the team has built and super excited to be actually on, on one of the, I guess, the first few videos that are coming out on Spring 21, if not the first. So excited to take you folks through it. Yeah. And, and uh, this will be my second video that's actually branded Tableau CRM. And I believe it's the first time that we're ever going to be seeing the new logo. I always like to start off in settings here. And let's see if I can spot anything different. Um, I noticed this new enable Tableau hyper output connection. I have no idea what it is. What does this say? So we can save data to a supported system outside of Einstein analytics. Enables target tab to the analytics man. I'm just gonna turn it on. We're gonna find out on the other side. Enable SQL support uh, for live connections. I'm assuming this is gonna be Snowflake only. I don't have a Snowflake connection. Is that an accurate guess? That would be an accurate guess. Once you have a live connection to Snowflake, you will be able to write custom SQL queries against it. So next place I like to look is in the perms. I don't know. Are you spotting any that are new? Um, nothing here, but I think from the ED stuff, you just got to ask Bobby about it. Does yeah. this, uh, how, how long is the scroll bar? Is that all? No, that's, that's, that's the extent of it. I feel like, I feel like if I'm noticing any difference, it's that the discovery stuff has been par uh, compartmentalized differently and that some of these are now flagged with, uh, with deprecated. So then usually my next stop is going to be analytics studio. Oh no detour embedded. I definitely spotted this right when I logged in. So get notifications and important metric changes. So is this just a new onboarding or is this, oh, can we now, is it just that now we're able to see notifications in the embedded context? You can see and uh, add notifications from an embedded context. So all your users who are consuming this dashboard can actually now have access to set notifications themselves. So they don't have to go to studio anymore. I really wanted to bring that capability onto the embedded dashboards. I think the whole idea here is um, we're trying to keep users in CRM. We, we're trying to break down that barrier between you know, the lightning uh, experience and the analytics studio experience, keep users in CRM and still allow them that full robust experience. So that's super cool. Uh, let's take a look at what we got in the, uh, you know, on the, the account embedded context. Oop, there's that new, uh, new logo. When I popped in here last week, it was, uh, Astro wearing a construction hat and holding a blueprint. And yes, kitty cat surfing on pizza is perfectly normal behavior. That is the next best action. There it is. So... Yes, I have this. No, I never really got it working. So live connections, this is where we're going to get Snowflake and I believe potentially S3. Ooh, this is cool. And this is going to be literally as far as I can go, but I'm going to have to uh, link up with one of my teammates, Callan, who he's been doing some really cool stuff, pulling, um, He's pulling our Salesforce data. He's pulling uh, data from like 10 different uh, systems that our company uses. He's pushing it all into AWS and layering Tableau on top of it. So I know the right guy to get in touch with, but not going to be able to get much further than this, but that's, that's super cool. Let's see if I can open anything in data prep 3.0. 
this org might just be too old and busted for it. No, there's there's some data prep 3.0 stuff. What is this? It's angry. Yep, the note is not valid. I'm actually going to hold off for spoilers here because I'm trying to get Tim on uh, for a video at some point. So we're just going to leave sense. all this behind the video. Never did get watch list to work in this org. Uh, whenever I turn it back on, it, it just it just breaks everything. Um, pretty sure it was my fault. Yeah, for subscriptions, you know, we made some changes. Uh, if you'll see your subscriptions tab on that uh, left side, that's where you see all your subscriptions and that email and the format that goes out to all your subscription notifications. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, what we've added in Spring 21 is the ability to reorder that subscriptions. Is to you know just just be able to add more customization to how that email looks like, what order it is in. So you know you can get your most important KPIs things up about give you more flexibility. That's actually going to be something that's going to be coming out in Spring 21. Oh, another thing might be that um, what changed was subscriptions is now behind a user preference or I guess a user pump. So it needs to be enabled for the given set of users. Just because the data that's now shown in the subscriptions is filtered uh -huh. to that user. Ooh, oh, that, oh, so maybe that's that's, nice. that's the present that we were looking for. So I do like that you're searching for sub. By the way, admins of the world, don't be this guy. Oh, I clearly need all the permission sets. No, don't be that guy. I log into so many orgs and I see uh, admin users that have 15 million different permission sets that they have absolutely no reason to need um this one right here password never expires yep i can subscription i'm going to subscribe to this bar chart that will never change i think it might even be fake data now i'm going to spam myself every saturday at one in the morning <laughs> i'm so going to regret that <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, so I did. I'm pretty sure I said 1 a.m. for that. I think that's probably a time zone offset thing. So now let's take a look back here. Oh, now I got a subscriptions tab. Okay. So I know we can subscribe to up to 20 widgets. And the reordering piece, I'm guessing I need at least two to figure it out. Oh, components, Oh, there hot we go. dogs. Now, what I'm wondering is what happens if I subscribe to a widget and then don't save the dashboard? So I've got the subscription right here. Organize your subscriptions, nice. I don't know why it's up there and I can't get rid of it. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm gonna duplicate my tabs so that I can keep that dashboard open, even though this dashboard has unsaved changes and I'm subscribed to them. And interesting, because this is this is what the annotations will show up like, is you'll get that number there. So I don't know why I would, maybe the use cases, I would subscribe to it. I wanna get it on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, so I'd subscribe multiple times. I don't I don't know why this is a one. I think it also captures the state of all the filters when you subscribe. So if you are looking to subscribe to the same widget with a different um, set of filters, that um, might be one use case. So it looks like we can reorder them. Now, can Pete break it? If I close this dashboard with unsaved changes, I am subscribed to a widget that will no longer exist. I don't know. That's kind of interesting. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna have to find out what happens because I'm willing to bet it's not like it forced me to save that dashboard. So I'm curious as to where I put that dashboard. But this this is super cool. So my guess is what will actually happen is that uh, if if I had to guess, this will either poof go away at some point, or when the subscription when the subscription goes to fire, it's going to attempt to query that widget, and it's not going to work. Or, or 
maybe it's actually saved that query over to here somewhere. I mean, it's not like I can hit control E. Nothing happens when I hit control E here. So uh, we will find out uh, on Saturday. Another thing I always like to check, what do we got in table land? I bet you're excited now, right? You do a lot of tables. <laughs> we had a good two releases of table works. We got a lot more stuff to deliver as well. Sure, we've got a double grouping and how high can it go pete how high can it go with the groups oh well the truth is there's never been a limit but how the can ui limit the, U mm. the ui limit was historically four and that's something clients have complained about <laughs> let's find out how many dimensions do we have on this data set six i like it I like it. Um, yeah, so we increased it from four to been... six. And I think this is a good place for me to just plug again that uh, yeah, we have seen requests for having more than like six groupings. And one of the workarounds that I've seen is that I've tried to see if that works for people is to just use a string formula to kind of project those dimensions that you want to see in a table. Um, so like using first oh, or like last the... of dimension and those don't count towards the uh, grouping limits. But yeah, for those of you who must take it beyond. You just hop into your advanced editor. I've got an API name on my clipboard that I grabbed off data set fields. I'm gonna go like this. And I have to do that at every grouping. So you can really, you can have as many groups as you want. When you hover over the headers, on the table when you're in dashboard preview mode, do you see any drop downs there? And uh, what you've done is if you could check that out, so you can kind of unfreeze or go. freeze as many columns as you like, and you can you know unfreeze all of them, freeze a few. But as the dashboard author, you can choose how many columns are frozen or unfrozen by default, while still uh, you know while still giving the flexibility to your consumers to change it. Yeah, that's what solved the issue for me. This, this used to be my method for looking for new SACL functions is I would just go into, and I never successfully found one this way. Um, I just go like this and I look for new stuff. And then I hit, you know, B and then I do C <laughs> oh. and I just look for things that I don't recognize, you know, D no, no, no. And I go through the whole alphabet and see if there's any functions I don't recognize. That's quite the systematic mint. Well, you know, a little stubborn determination goes a long way. So this feature was in, uh, was in pilot last release. My assumption is that it's going to GA because Arthur said it was going to skip beta. Are we able to create a new component from this UI? You should be able to. I mean, we can try that out. I think so. Yeah, and as you're designing a component, you kind of, uh, whatever widget you put it into on the parent dashboard, it takes up all of the horizontal space. So. Uh, if you want to take up all of the horizontal space in the parent dashboard, you kind of just make sure you use up all of that space in the component itself, if that makes sense. You cannot just use the entire horizontal space when you're designing a component. And that, that way, if you kind of resize the widget in the parent dashboard, it will automatically resize as well. I would interpret that to mean that if I add this as my component, this, when I embed it on the dashboard, is going to only be, a, it's only going to take up the left third. Correct. Oh, that'll be my guess. There we go. There we go. Yeah, that, that, that's the behavior. And then we could do something like this with it. Now, I don't think that that's going to instantly refresh, but we could probably just grab it again. And for that, we do have a refresh content. You should see a refresh content link on the right side, just below those configs. Ooh, indeed. Oh, filters and fastening. Yeah, I was waiting for that most definitely. And I would say that's the, the, the that's the that's the big thing 
as we take uh, components from pilot to GA is earlier, you know, we build the stuff to allow you to build a component, manage it, et cetera, but it was kind of sitting isolated on a dashboard. And now we wanted to interact with the rest of the dashboard as well. So, you know, you, you have a global mm -hmm. filter in your main dashboard, you know, it will fast that it will filter stuff in your component. So let's try this. Let's try editing our component. I'm moving this guy over to the right. We'll try that refresh out. There it is. I'm digging it. And yeah. So if a dash, if a component has multiple pages, we can choose the default page that it's going to land on. But then let's try this filter in passing. I built the ugliest dashboard when I did this stuff. Oh yeah, there it is. We have faceting into the components. We can that these are like the toppings on the hot dog. You know, like a little bit of ketchup, a little bit of relish. I'm really digging it. Thanks. So if you check out the link widget and see if you spot any new options, new types of stuff you can do there. Or like when you do link to. Oh, we can target a specific page within a component. Yeah, so you can mass action. Mass action. That's new. Nice page. catch, Pete. It's like a present on top of a present. Oh. Well, one thing at a time. Let's start with because I I think I know what that's gonna be. So first I'm gonna edit this component and I'm gonna add a second page to it. So let's try out this bit first. So page in component, our component is new component two, which makes sense because this is usually an error when something gets deleted. I think maybe it's because I don't have that selected. I'm just gonna X out of the error. And it's still getting cranky with me. Nice. So this allows us to control navigation within a container without having to expose. Oh my gosh, this is, I can think of a million really awesome things I'm gonna do with this. So question, filter, filtration and fastening, it's one directional into the component, right? We can't then pass values back out. Good question. I think we'll just have to try it out now. Oh, you're making me think that we can. That's a really good call out. I like that. Because here at Let's Play Salesforce, our motto is click every button. Faceting is bi-directional. Okay. So I think I didn't save the changes to the button. So what I'm actually thinking that we could potentially do with this is, so one limitation that I, I come up against is that global filters, if you wanna have single global filters versus they, they also have to appear in the global filter set. You know, Maybe you sometimes need selections of list widgets and filters because of just different stuff you're doing with bindings and you know, what's really awesome about global filters is when you have way too many filters, you can save your page real estate by, um, by, in, by having that scroll feature. And I'm a big hater of scroll bars with the exception of my client wants 50 filters on the page. How am I going to find room for all of them? Well, I'm going to use a global filter widget and I'm going to scroll. So what I'm envisioning with this is that because the, the limitation is still though, I can't have different sections of filters. So maybe for one part of my dashboard, I need a set of filters A for a different part of my dashboard, I need a set of filters B. What if I just put all of the different filters on different pages within the component and then we could cycle through them? Share state tooltip. So it looks like we have a tooltip pending. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so right now it looks, my, my assumption is that fastening is gonna be all or none. It, it will both broadcast and receive it. You can't select between them and that you cannot, um, at least at current state, who knows what the roadmap has in store, but with uh, current state with fastening, we can 
uh, not only can we choose whether uh, whether or not it accepts and broadcasts, but we also have include exclude. So we can specifically say take everything except this or take only this, which is something that those were pure binding use cases. I actually don't know what release that feature was added in, but I I I use that constantly. So um, I'm I'm definitely going to say though this this is. This has reached its, you know, it, its golden era. We have bidirectional fastening with hot dogs. That's all I was waiting for. So let's check out this last one here. That's totally a text widget and not a link widget. I'd also just like, you know, and, and, and classic kid on Christmas, you give me everything I want and then I ask for more. I would love it if one of the options was next page, hmm. um, you know, because like a lot of times we just want the next button and instead of, so if I have a dashboard where we're cycling through like five pages, it's, you'd be surprised how often I screw it up that you have to make sure that there's two buttons or two links on each page where it goes, you know, um, one, three, two, four, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, to make sure that you're cycling through the pages correctly, but um, I think just next page and previous page would be really great because then you could just add them to every page, and they would be smart enough to just you, it would it, you'd peak proof it effectively. Got it. And you can take care of the ordering so mass, directly. Okay. Mass action. I don't have any bulk actions enabled on this dashboard, but. Uh, and I, I don't think I have any actions enabled, but if I had to guess what this is, is this is going to select uh, a column that supports action framework. So your link down for, for drop, uh, your, your, your drop down for link out, new task, log call, et cetera. And it will attempt to perform that on all records in that column. Uh, potentially, now the question I'm, I, I have is, Will this only work if bulk actions are supported? Is it going to make you pick a row? Um, I don't have any data sets in this org that that have actions enabled. So hopefully you can just kind of talk me through what the behavior is. Yeah. So yeah, this is to make uh, kind of do record actions on multiple records at the same time. So you can choose any. So what you'll see in the action column is all those columns that do have actions enabled on the data set XMD. And then Salesforce action is the list of actions on each of those records. So it can be things like update, call, log a call, chatter, et cetera. And what the mass action button will let you do is that you can actually choose to perform these actions on all the items in the visualization up to 100 records, I believe, or you can select the uh, items that you want and then hit this button. It will only update, it will only take action on the selected records. Then if we had a use case where the selected action is going to result in a pop-up modal and I select five or six records, I'm, will it just pop up one at a time and I'll cycle through them? Or will it do, will it, you know, pre-populate values the way it always does and just one action applies to all? That, that's a good question. Something I got to go ask I'm the team to, before we I'm find out. To enable actions on some data set <laughs> in this org and, and figure it out. All right. Well, that's really awesome. I'm I'm guessing that that's all we're going to be able to find that isn't behind like hidden perms, right? There is one uh, last thing that I'll leave you with, and it all starts from the number widget. And if you can go to the tooltip section, or if you can see if there's any goodness hidden there. Well, I think first I just need to get a number widget. There we go. Mm. Oh, that's fancy. So, oh, I know what this is. <laughs> so we can say, what are the things rolling up to this number, right? Because this is my total count of rows, but maybe I want to see it broken down by airline. Oh. That is super cool. I thought that this thing was like at least two or three releases away. That's so cool. I got to try it out. So now on hover, do I, do I just get it on hover? How do I do it? 
Oh, I, I, I can, I can click on it. So it's not, it's not, it is on hover. You just got to wait a second. And then if you click, it gives you a black outline. I don't know why, but this is awesome. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, are... we, we, we introduced a slight delay just so that, you know, we don't start kicking off these tooltips as a user is hovering over some of these widgets, but uh, totally open to feedback around, yeah, if it feels too much, too less, kind of balancing performance versus uh, usability in this feature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and it's always a battle of real estate. It's always a battle of how do I give my users all of the information under the sun while still having a clean, simple, lean, easy to interpret dashboard. And there's that whole uh, 31060. In three seconds, you need to know what the dashboard is telling you. Within 10 seconds, you should understand the health of the scenario. And within, within 60 seconds, you should be able to fully consume all the information that's being conveyed without a drill down. The reality of the situation is we all build giant scrolling monsters and walls of KPIs. Don't do that. And features like this allow us to not be trapped in that scenario. So I can have my table and still have a nice compact number widget. And we started with the number widget because you know it was an easier problem to solve. There's no groupings, et cetera. Uh, we have, I've seen many dashboards have KPIs at the top, something that we wanted to target first and we have more widgets where we want to enable these sort of custom tooltips as well. A common ask has also been, hey, um, I love the idea of visualization. Can I also just add some custom text, maybe as an onboarding to when I hover over this tooltip? So we also added support for customizing the text in the tooltip. <clears throat> so it looks like we can also control the display size. Let's be jerks. Let's make it too narrow and too tall, but not so much that it's just going to break everything. Look at all them rows, 42. I have no idea where that 42 came from. I just grabbed a random query. <laughs> this is awesome. I am super, super pumped about this. All right, so I am super excited about everything that we just saw. This is a completely unorthodox fashion for, for me to record this sort of video, but that was super fun um, because normally the process, I might have found a third of that stuff and it would have taken me all day. Um, and it's a lot more participatory than just saying, oh, hey, why don't you come demo and, and, and you do all the work and I'll just get the, 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 I'll get the, the, the views on, on YouTube. Um, so I had a blast. Uh, let's do this again sometime. Likewise, Pete. This is actually a lot of fun. So uh, uh, th there's more stuff, I'm sure, that's actually there. But, uh, you know, look out for the release notes. Any questions you have, ask on the community. You can reach out. Trill to uh, show everything that's been happening around to our community. All right. Thanks and for having to, me. Yeah, definitely. And uh, to the folks at home, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, tell a friend. And as always, thanks for watching.